workers are going under the knife. And with me today is plastic surgeon Dr. Richard Chafu and Kate Philbin, who is one of his patients. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. I want to ask you about this rising trend. Why are more baby boomers looking to plastic surgery? Rick, I think it's because um, we're, we're growing older, we're, we're living longer, and we're living healthier. So 65 might be, you know, today might be 50. Uh, physiologically, it's important that it's not just your chronological age, but more importantly, it's your physiological age. So people are, are actually living longer, they're working uh, later in life, staying very active, and they actually don't recognize necessarily the person that they see in the mirror. They feel a much younger version of themselves, and they want to recapture some of that youth. And when we say this is a rising trend, looking at some of the numbers, 85,000 people over the age of 65, mm -hmm. I guess, are, are getting plastic yes. surgery or have plastic surgery. Um, and what does that say? 80 billion now spent on plastic surgery. So this really is something that is not going unnoticed. You have no. a lot of people going under the knife. We do. And you do have a patient here with you today. Hello, Kate. You look great, first of all. Thank you. Um, can you talk a little bit about the procedures Kate had? Of course. Well, Kate's a delightful lady. Uh, she came to see me. She's very active, works, and just actually is a grandmother as well, believe it or not, <laughs> and um, really wanted to uh, look more youthful, a little younger, and again, felt that her, uh, she'd begin to get some aging in her jaw and her neckline, was concerned about that, mm -hmm. and so she ended up having a procedure of face and neck lift to, to improve you, those areas. Kate, if you could look at camera sure. one, and actually we'll do a side-by-side -side sort of a before and after. Can you talk just briefly about the improvements sure. we're so, seeing? So what we're seeing is her before picture on the left, and of course the live afterwards. You can see that she had some looseness along her jaw, the neckline, um, and I don't know if you have a lateral picture as well that you're able to show. You can see some changes there as well. So essentially, the procedure was to re- uh, make a smoother, tighter jaw mm -hmm. and neckline, again, recapture some of that youth. And Kate, how do you feel about the surgery? Why did you decide to do it? I wanted some reconstruction, and doctor encouraged me. He said he thought I, I would be a really good patient. And uh, it went smoothly for me, and actually it's been a year, uh, September 8th, so I'm happy to be through it, and I'm feeling great. And people don't usually notice that much but they look at me a little differently. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting to the point where when people do ask, I'm braver now, so I say, yes, I have done something. But in the beginning, I was very, very quiet. Well, <laughs> you look great, and you brought up Thank a good you. point, Dr. Shefu. You said that they have to be the right candidate. Yes. Uh, talk to me about that. When a patient comes to you and says, I want so-and-so procedure done, I mean, you really have to evaluate them. You do, right? Because the big thing is you want to make sure that they've had a good medical history, medical clearance. So you want to make sure that you've connected somehow with their, with their physician, make sure they've had uh, recent uh, proper uh, and appropriate lab testing, medical clearance by the medical physician, and then um, obviously talk to the patient in detail about what are their specific aesthetic concerns and what can, what can be done to address those in, in, a, in a natural and in a safe way. And finally, talking about looking for the right doctor, what should patients who are considering any procedure look for? Well, the gold standard is to make sure that you're seeing a surgeon certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgeons, someone who's a member of the American Society of Plastic Surgeons, the American Society for Aesthetic Plastic Surgery. And then, very importantly, you want to make sure that you have a board-certified anesthesiologist to give you the anesthesia. It should be in a certified surgery center. Those are the real three takeaway messages. All right, Dr. Shafu, thank you so much thank for you, joining Rick. us. Kate, you look thank beautiful. You, thank you again for giving us uh, insight into your experience. So we've posted a link uh, to Dr. Shafu's website. Just go to cbs8.com and click on the hot button if you want more information. We'll see you after the break. News 8, presented in HD, is brought to you by Toyota San Diego. It was as big as three football fields. With super high-tech electronics everywhere you looked, and hundreds and hundreds of 21st century vehicles. I've never seen anything like it. But they were friendly, very friendly. Who says big can't be friendly? Not Toyota San Diego.